All right, well, let's get to the meat and potatoes of the whole combine, baby. The running backs. Yeah, so this thing just wrapped what I'm up. what here for. When we're talking about the backs and we got the tight ends to, to finish this up for, when usually they would be an afterthought, but I think they, they, they you know, it was nice, nice showing by the, the tight ends. The best one might be an afterthought now because he didn't do great, but. Maybe. Maybe. Let's start. The rest, with, though. Let's start with the running backs. Yeah, though. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think Bijan didn't let you down. Bijan right? certainly out the didn't, way. didn't let you down. A, a, a good forty time and the speed. You know, some people were thinking four fives. It was under four fives. And I, as soon as he ran that first one, I just went like this, and I was like, "All right, we're good." Yeah, we don't stumble a little. We don't bit. have to hear about this shit anymore. We're not. We're, we're good. Bijan, wrap it up mm -hmm. in a bow, one one. And you watch him run the receiving drills, and that ball is just sticking in mm -hmm. there. It's like it didn't even make a sound. Right. And he just like it's just so smooth and. Just like Gibbs. Gibbs and Bijan look different out there. Like yeah. you can't tell me that Gibbs didn't look different out there and everything he did, which I, I mean uh A Chain had a great combine, but Gibbs, I mean he's, people are mad he was one ninety nine, so um can't ever be any good if you're fucking under two hundred pounds. You couldn't drank three more glasses of water till you were two hundred pounds. Just another Shut reason the fuck up. why Twitter is the worst. What does it fucking matter? It doesn't 200 or 199. It, it has me worried. Let's, you just didn't like him. Right. You just don't like something about him, which I don't know how you couldn't like Jameer Gibbs because the tape is phenomenal and the combine was phenomenal. Right. And he catches the ball. Like, they, like he didn't have to run that Texas route. You know, like, that's his route. Right. Like he's just fucking crushing shit out there. And when, when he did that drill where, uh, where you have to step over the, the pads mm -hmm. and then go whichever way that the guy moves it like right. he didn't even like move that much right it was just like oh my god yeah like how did yeah he's fine he's i'm not worried about him and you can yeah as as we're, we're gonna point the range of outcomes saying that that he could be fucking you know jamal charles well you know he could be naheen hines but you know I'm going to I'm going to lean on the side of maybe a little bit closer to Jamal Charles for me. Yeah, for um, sure. But, you know, we're talking about weight and I, I saw a, a a a tweet from uh, uh multiple different people about 200 pound running backs, but it was basically Christian McCaffrey at Pro Day Combine weigh-ins 202 pounds, Austin Eckler 198, LaShawn McCoy 198, Chris Johnson 195, Jamal Charles 200, Reggie Bush 201. Um, you know, I just don't fucking care that much that he was fucking 199. It doesn't matter. I knew that th that was the case coming into it. Like, it's a that red was, box, Casey. That was exactly what I knew was going yeah. to happen coming into this thing. He was going to be somewhere around there, and I don't care. Yeah. I don't want him to get 300 fucking carries. I want him to be used like Austin Eckler. That's kind of the biggest piece to the puzzle is w does he get put in a situation and drafted by the right team? If he goes to the Bills, fuck that, I'm out. Like. <laughs> Because they are the absolute worst at using fucking the running back position, even though they they seem from the outside like they really like want to use care. the running back like yeah. that. But like the Chargers are how you need to use the fucking running back like Gibbs, exactly just like Eckler. That's what you want: 10, 12, maybe fifteen carries a game, and then just check it fucking down to him and run him run a couple routes to him, that's run just, him a muck. That's right. Let him catch from a ton of fucking balls position. and give him 200 carries and 200, maybe 250 if we're getting greedy. That's a lot. Yeah. If we're getting, NFL, I said, I said if we're getting greedy. I said yeah. if we're getting greedy. But I'm just not worried about it. He's 250 staying, touches and he's going to pay dividends. He's staying right, right there at, at, at two for me. I'm not, yeah. not moving anything because of a fucking pound. Yeah, That's he why looked he, so smooth like, and fluid like. Some of us like are trying to have fun and have a good time and be, but be say like semi taken seriously. And then when you guys get get out there and start to, who is he would have drank more water? So he would have been two hundred. Shut the fuck up. Nobody's gonna take you. Shut up. Just shut up. It's not that fucking serious. It's a pound. Stop. Like, come on, man. Yeah, I don't know how these tweets work. I well, don't know how this shit works. They got big companies back in their name, and they I tweet just, a lot, and it just... All these tweets. So dumb. Uh, but uh, Charbonnet kind of stuck right in there and, and did exactly what he needed to do to not be... Now we can stop fucking calling him this draft cycle's Isaiah Spiller, and we can fucking get off that lame shit and just let Zach Charbonnet be the RB3 in this class. Um, Tucker didn't run... Uh, Evans didn't run, you know, you, you Yo, know, Evans didn't do a goddamn well, well, thing right. except way in. Right. We shouldn't have even done that. Right. I guess he had to. He Should, was there. Yeah. I guess he went there for interviews. I don't know if you could just be like, ah, I got food poisoning. I can't weigh in, but which he, 
you know, I was like, man, you, you weren't going to run it. You didn't do any drills because I guess he has a hamstring strain. You couldn't have, like, drinking four more glasses of water. Like, it would have taken a lot. You needed to drink a lot more water. Right. But and I guess what, what, it you're, like, what you're alluding to is we were hoping to be at the 215 range, which he kind of looks like, but yeah. he was at the 202 he range. Runs like, uh, it's 204, I think. But, uh, but you know, not not the best uh for for him and you so know, as we just, just got done to make fun of somebody ago. for weight yeah. and weight being a weightist but it was that was a big difference well i don't know, feel be, I, I don't think he's gonna run a four four two or three or whatever it was that Gib, gibbs uh, well, gibbs ran gibbs ended up with a four three eight uh on on the second one so or, or something along those lines um, that's a four three six. Yeah, he, he, it, right. it, it went up. To the the official score was a four three six. I don't think Evans is going to run that fast. No, I wanted Evans in the four fours. That would right. have been pretty good. Like if I could get mid to low two fifteen four fours right. is what you wanted. Right, right, right. Uh, and I thought maybe he was trying to cut weight to run a low four four. Right, because he does look pretty fast. He does have pretty. He has some breakish away speed on film. Right, it's part of the reason why we like him. And maybe he was cutting weight. To, to get that score up, because that would be smart. But then seven days before the combine, which I guess isn't enough time to go ahead and put 10 pounds on right. to weigh in, knowing you're not going to run. So he kind of got screwed with losing, with cutting weight and then not being able to test. I, mean, I don't even know if he really cut weight. Like, there was a lot of talk where he was. Like, there was when I when we to first man did the his, benefit of the doubt, which nobody wants to do for him. When we first started doing this, it was like he was somewhere between, like, 203 and 220. And then it's like it seemed like 215 was becoming a little more common. And that that was just not the best thing for Zach Evans. And then nothing to, to go on in the combine. But there was also a whole bunch of guys who really didn't do anything. And I saw some of the analytical guys getting upset about it. That, hey, we got to make these guys do this somehow. Why? Because you might actually have to fucking do something. Uh, how and, else and am I going to figure this out? How do out? I know if this guy's any good? Um, but no, good for these fucking guys. Fuck you. Great for them. How about that? Fuck off. Yeah. We're going to fuck the fuck off. We're going to go and we're just we're going to go do things that on our own pro day or maybe we won't even do them. Sean Tucker um, didn't run the 40. Good for him. Right. He didn't do he didn't. He wasn't out there running drills either. I don't know what his deal uh, was. Yeah, I don't I don't know that. He I did. definitely didn't see him. There or weren't that not. many running backs like they had one round, you know, all the other position groups. Right. I didn't watch the tight ends. But well, they usually split them up. Right. And they have two groupings. Because it was like a 50 There wasn't enough wide two receivers. groupings. There, there was running one backs. wide Which is good for them. Group. Hey, basically, I look at it like this. If the NFL is going to say fuck you, tell the NFL fuck you. Right. Like, <laughs> I was thinking on that today, man. Like, Evan Ingram is about to get $11 million with the salary cap or with the, with the, comp, with the franchise tag. And he's better than all these sw- slot wide receivers. And he can block. And they're all getting paid five million dollars more than him. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. And I'm like, and then I think about running backs who are literally touching the ball like on every other play. Right. And they're getting shit on. They don't want to get. Nobody will give them twelve million. No one even wants to get close to that shit. Or, I mean, fifteen like, or sixteen is really what they want. But you know, they should be getting like way more because their career's way shorter. Right. He's carrying your team. He should be getting paid so much money. And it's like, how do they, they would all have to strike. Well, but then I guess the, they'd like, the, the idea, someone else would step up. The and idea the, is that they're not carrying your team except for the really good ones, which is the really good ones should get, should get bigger money in my opinion, but they're not going to because they always feel like they can, uh, you know, go somewhere else, split it up, have a committee, yada, yada, yada. But I agree with you. Like the running backs should just go into the league with a higher fucking slotted uh, amount of money because the second contract is, you know, has to happen. And like, they're going to nickel and dime you on it for the most part or say, Hey, you know, we're just going to find somebody else, which I mean, whatever, but good for them. Um, I thought Charbonnet solidified, solidified RB three status, which was basically kind of how, where you had him. I, he's a plug and play and you're hoping that he gets the three down workload. Uh, Cause that's kind of what I think he profiles as, and could be one of those guys. Now there isn't that many in the league who are doing that. Uh, but I think he can be that guy and has the chance. And if he can get the opportunity to, he could definitely do that. If he's the two down grinder, it's not nearly as much fun. But I think he's got all the all the the pieces and parts and tools to be a three down player. Um, I think the next guy really on the list for me, outside of those guys, kind of going down the list here was was uh, Chase Brown. Um, came in and 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 had a very good combine. Um, third or yeah, fourth they, in, in they the. Could not keep the, his mouth out there, Nate. <laughs> His name out their mouth. Um, he he he's got the numbers and the film. I like the film a whole lot um, from him, and he's got that track speed. And I can't say I've seen much film kinda, from him, but kind of popped good up in here. The receiving drills, right? They all kind of did, and they he, were all. 
he was kind of he seemed like he was kind of on the fringe of that Tucker Tank Evans group for, for, for me there for a little while. And maybe he could fight up in there. Really, again, wasn't sure about the, what the weight was going to be for him. But he comes in at at five, nine, two oh nine. So, I, you know, that I like that. That was that's perfect. Uh, you know, people were saying he, uh, he was 210, but then other people were saying he was barely 200. So I wasn't sure exactly. I think this is the weight was nice. The five nine was was fine. I don't give a shit about five nine's fine. Yeah. Um, and elite then the the athletic and uh, elite burst was explosion. good. And the forty was was fantastic. Now again, track guy, uh, but uh, came in and absolutely crushed it, and and has good tape and good stats to kind of back all that up. I think he did a lot for himself right here. And this is you know I know we're you know one of the guys that's going to be a bit of a mover. I think and and definitely I think has at least pushed himself up to maybe the top of the second round in your super flex tight end premium draft ish rate or super flex drafts. I'm not, a, I don't have a great read on non super flex cause that's all we've been kind of talking about here and we will get there eventually. Um, but I think, you know, right around the top of the twos, you know, cause I don't know exactly where Tucker's going to end up and he hasn't been my favorite through this process. And Evans really just probably went down a little bit. Tank didn't have the best combine ever. Although I, you know, I don't mind tank on tape, uh, kind of a one cut go, but you know, I thought he was going to be a little bit better in this, in this, uh, situation here, but chase Brown, um, a very nice day for him. I can't find out why Sean Tucker didn't, it does. I can't find anything about it. Maybe injury. he just wants to run him on his pro day. He just said he opted out. Yeah. Of Fuck all him. the drills. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he knew he wasn't going to do well. I don't know. That's I guess that's smart. People didn't want to see like he was kind of like man, can this because he's right. a track star. Can we get a four three he's out a of this guy? Can we get a four four star. out of right. this guy? You know, he's like one of the fastest people like from his state and shit. Like he 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 was crushing in high right. school and ran at Syracuse. So right. like, I'm I'm very surprised at and, and to have him not out there like catching balls and shit. He didn't like right. do anything. Like, yeah. right? Not, that's not weird. much. Not much. That's weird. But Evan Hull from Northwestern came out there, had a good combine. Um, Was that the man running into the end zone every single time? Yeah. He <laughs> ran ran fast. He um, ran 300 more yards than anyone else at the combine. And and put together a good RAS score uh, for him. Uh, but, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what that does, if it can move up his draft capital a little bit um, and see, see if he can position himself a little better and, and make him a name to be really, you know, Get him out of the third, fourth rounds. Get him up into the second rounds, maybe for for your your suit your actual rookie drafts. I'm not talking about the NFL draft here, uh, but if you know if Chase Brown sniffs anywhere in that second, third round in the actual NFL draft, he's going to shoot way up the board. Or really, any of these running backs probably, unless it's you know, A Chain seems like he's the outlier of kind of a lot hinging on what what the league is going to do with with um, you know kind of that that size speed. Uh, coming in at, at 5'8", 188. Uh, so, you know, just a little bit on the smaller it's a side of size. size red checkbox if you're right. listening on the podcast. You know, and if you're worried about Gibbs being 199 or 200, there's no way you can't be worried about A-Chain being, you know, 188. 188 yeah. um, and then, you know, not a good vertical and no broad jump for him. So the explosion, uh, you know, not, not going to grade well there. He did do a there. broad, only a 33-inch vert. But then ran like I think like the second or third fastest forty time right. at the Which, combine to be expected. Yeah, um, and he, then looked obviously great in the passing drills. So. Right, um, I I don't mind a chain at all. Uh, I, I I think he's better than than Tariq he should better than he should be at running through the tackles. Right. Uh, but the, you know he he he's got good agility and he can make you miss. And he's not certainly not scared to run between the tackles. But I don't, I don't he's not. The, He's not going to grind you very much in there when he's just small. When so when people can, you know, kind of stand him up a little bit and they pretty much move him every single time where he's not pushing that many piles. Great as a receiver, yeah, great on anything I don't need outside. To push too many piles, um, and I don't know how important it's going gonna, it's gonna to be. How important are goal line touches? Is that a dumb question? Uh, are they like extreme, the most important? Yeah, thing? I mean that's what you're. That's what you want. I mean, obviously that's going to get you the most fantasy points. Um, you know, it's a change just going to come down to what team I mean, drafts catching balls is also going to get you for sure. But, a lot of you know, points. a six six point play is, you know, or seven point play, depending on how, if you caught it and got in the end zone. You know, it's just going to come down to whether or not who drafts them and the plan they have for them for the amount of touches that they're going to give them and who they pair them up with. You know, Tariq Cohen didn't get very many goal line 
carries. You yeah, know I mean, I mean that's that's the comp that seems to be coming out a lot is is Tariq Cohen who you know for a minute Outlier. there was was a whole lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, might have been like RB twelve one year. I don't remember, but big explosive plays. Yeah, um, it was like and, a thirty yard touchdown every time you turn around. I think A chain's for sure a better player than he was, um, and can offer you a little bit more. So. I'll be interested for me for a chain. It's going to come down to where does who that value him? set? Well, who takes him in the real NFL draft and where does that, where's the draft capital go? And then where does the value settle out in actual rookie drafts? Like where, where does that start factoring in? It's, is it top of the first, is it middle of the first or top, top? Sorry. Is it top of the second, middle of the second, uh, closer to the end of the second? I'm not really sure, but it seems like it'll probably be somewhere in the middle to, maybe even early second for, for some people. I don't think that this really changed anything for those people who were saying, hey, maybe maybe you know top of the second for me. Yeah. Um, I think in your like home drafts, you know, if you're on Dynasty Twitter playing Dynasty football, then, you know, the hundred and eighty eight pounds might get you a good deal on A chain. But I think in your home leagues where guys have watched Texas A and M and know the name and know the speed they're probably going to just take a swing on the guy's name because you know, he's got name cachet. Yeah. People know who the fuck A-Chain is. Right. Great fucking name. Great name. Uh, so I think I think early second probably still. Yeah, I don't think this changes too, too much. No. Um, and then Spears didn't run, but, you know, did, did a few drills. The vertical was really good for him. I think it was almost a 40-inch vertical for, for they Spears. They were all over him, too, in the comments. His, his drills, his drill work was really great. good. Um, so I, I'm, I've been staying pretty high on Spears. I think he's he could be a candidate for end of end of the first, early second uh, guy all day long. Only um, 201. I've been snagging him up. That's fine. I mean, he's just, I don't view him as very much different than Gibbs. Um, yeah. As far, well, just as far as like the way the usage is and what he can do. I mean, he's, he's really, he he's, he's going to be a wide receiver. He's going to be Gibbs? fast and quick. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think the receiving game, I mean, I don't think anybody's as good as a yeah. wide receiver of Gibbs, but I mean, I think he's as, as far like, as every, in every startup in draft that we're doing, I'm Tajay usually not the, missing Tajay in the yeah. 13th or the, uh, 14th round or 12th round, and, and you've if been you, taking a lot of rookies in these mocks. Yeah, it's been startups. Been what I've been liking, just because the, where the value is, I can just load up on rookie running backs, and if I hit on two of them, I'm good. Nervous. No, I'm I love it. Uh, plus, that's good. I think there's good liquidity in moving those guys around. They're gonna people are gonna be wanting those guys, and in trades, they're gonna be things to move. But that's for shinier a, for a startup draft conversation. Oh, we're, we're giving you all of kind of shit in these videos, um, but. Evan Hall, uh, Cameron Peoples has been a guy who I, I, I like, just a bigger bodied frame, and he Dude is ended massive. up with a with a pretty nice score, four six in the forty. Um, but he, he's he's in the green on on the RAS scores there near the top of the. But again, a lot of these guys didn't complete it and didn't go all the way through it, so he might be getting a little bit of boost, uh, kind of there being at the top of that. But you know, not changing the eight point seven five. Uh, but you know, six one two seventeen gives you a, a bit of a different back than some of the a lot of these other guys that we were kind of talking about. Gives you a hammer, and when he gets going, I think he could have a faster uh, run than four point six one. I've watched him a decent amount at App State there. Uh, Watching a lot of App State over there. Uh, they're on usually early, and I'm usually interested. They've they've been pretty good. They have been pretty good for um, what they're doing. Uh, where yeah. they are. So my sister in law went to App State, so fuck App State. <laughs> cool town, cool college town. Yeah, get, to, um, get some snowboarding but in. Bet uh, bet on some beer. App State there for a little while, and and some coastal Carolina for a little while, like over the last few seasons. So I'm aware of the people who are on the Keaton Mitchell, another guy who had a really good combine, but he's you know also in that camp, small guy. Um, he was he came in at five seven one seventy nine, ran a really fast time four three seven. Um, and then put up a nice explosion, a 38 inch vertical and a, a 10 six broad. So explosive guy. But again, where's what's the usage? How well, how is he getting touches? You know, how are they manufacturing him the ball? Interesting. We'll see where he ends up. Probably going to be a later round pick in the actual NFL draft and probably in your rookie drafts. Um, and then obviously Deuce Vaughn came in at five, five, <laughs> yeah. like 179. And Deuce is, you know, I, I, this is cliche, but fucking super fun to watch. Yeah, they were uh, they the were loving awesome, him in the booth. But, what Daniel do you do Jeremiah with him? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's a wait and see. Strong name, too. Right, right. Deuce Vaughn. Um, anybody Feels else? like an actor. You want to talk about here with the running backs? Running backs. I mean. Kenny McIntosh was hoping he might be a little better in, in some of these drills, um, but uh, still still holding out some hope that maybe he'll 
he'll get, garner a little bit of draft capital for the running for the uh, pass catching ability. Uh, but Tank Tank was a yeah, I little bit of a letdown. But where was he in the RAS scores here? Is he on the? He's right in the middle. Um, I'm not finding him. What am I doing here? Is he, he's on page one. Yeah, uh, seven point four nine. Um, Got it. Here it is. Came in at at uh, two ten five eleven. So, so this is a guy I haven't watched a ton of tape on because we, you know, we spent a lot of time to break down one prospect, which people haven't been digging those videos. So it's kind of a bummer. But I feel like I need to spend the time regardless, so I know how to properly rate these guys. People that just feel like they know everybody about everything about all these prospects. I'm like, how? You have endless amount of time. Well, some of these guys have been watching them the whole time and building it. So that that's how. Um, you just watch football all day Saturday and all day well, Sunday. Well, I, I think a lot of those guys do? don't watch that much Sunday football. Um, oh, well, then stop telling me about NFL players. <laughs> then I mean, most uh, people, I think there has to be a push and a pull there. Um, but. Some yeah. of those guys are, are younger and don't I mean, have a whole... I'm married and I have two kids, so I can't watch football all day Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I'll do a decent job of it. I do a fucking decent job I watch job all day Sunday it. and I get I get the meaningful Saturday I get Clemson ones. on Saturday because my wife went there, so we get, I get that too. <laughs> it's a loophole there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I really enjoyed it. Tank Bigsby did run all the drills and went through... Uh, not all the drills. You didn't. I, they don't show you the three cone. They don't show you the broad. They don't show you right. the vert. We're just showing you offensive linemen. Running just the all forty these and the offensive linemen. How fast can you get up from laying down? Right. Uh, My wife was like, "This is like. This seems like the dog show. This is like, painful." This is yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> but he looked. He looked good in the receiving drills. That's what I really wanted to watch. I wanted to watch how because they put him through the ringer. They run all these different routes and and. They did have to. The quarterbacks had to leave halfway through the receiving drills, so some scouts had to fill in yeah. on the deep ball. Actually, they were lighting it up out there. <laughs> it was pretty good. But uh, you know, they put them through the ringer of all these routes, and you get to see them how natural. Do, like you get a close up look, right, over and over and over again. They run each drill like twice, so and they run like I don't know four or five different drills. So you get to see. It's like pretty beneficial. It's like one of the best things you can watch. I like the How gauntlet they move, drill. What they do, and you know. it was JSN in that gauntlet drill. Oh my god, Woo. and Quentin Johnson, really? Yeah. Uh, but he looked good receiving the ball, and I haven't watched much tape because um, we haven't broken him down, and we probably won't do a profile video on him. But I'm gonna have to. I definitely he's on my list of running backs that I got to look into. I'm halfway but, through the tape on him. I, I like him. Um, I don't think he had very many like receptions or anything. Like he's not like a receiving back. No, not it's not terrible though. His name's Tank, but uh, he looked good at, you know, catching stuff in stride. I was actually really impressed with all those backs that were out there running drills. Like, it it didn't look laborsome. I was like, man, when is Zach Evans going to catch a ball? Because I want to see how, because I've seen him physically look bad trying to catch the ball out there on the field. And I wanted to see if, like, if he looked the same as everybody else or not, or if I could see a visible difference. And then and I was disappointed. And I was like, he's right. not out here. 62 in three years for Tank. So that's that's plenty. 30, 30 have, this year. 30 catches? Yeah, 30 and oh, 22. And good, then 11 his freshman year. Boom. Done deal. Something like that. He so, must be good. I like 20, he's, right? he's kind of a one cut kind of guy. He can get going. I, I, I like what he brings to the table, but this wasn't the best day for him. So it'll be interesting to see what the what the NFL thinks on that. And he, he hasn't necessarily dropped you know, anywhere, you know, too far down the list for me. I, I, I like Tank, you know, a good bit right now. So you'd have Charbonnet kind of in a tier in his own, tier t- tier three, or, or, yeah, tier three. You'd probably, mm-hmm. like, Bijan's in his own tier. Mm-hmm. Gibbs is in his own tier. Mm-hmm. Charbonnet's in his own tier. Right. Then we're, I'm not sure of Tucker or Evans, really, but right now I'm, I'm not feeling super thrilled about either one. Um, and then... I, I mean, what, yeah... I don't know what, what could have really changed for you with Tucker. I just didn't I just anything. didn't I just didn't I didn't but we I, weren't loving him. I wasn't anyway. loving him up yeah. up in the end of the first round of the uh rookie draft anyway. Super right. Flex tight and end so premium. then Evans we were we we're high on him, nothing to go on here except right. the small weight which, which not great. Right. For what he does and how he runs. So, you know, Spears A chain ish, um, you know, and Chase then Brown, Chase he, Brown for sure. I mean, I think I think, I think he comes up there. I think Tank stays hanging around for Tank's me. Ran, ran, uh, so like that's like a tier four with all those guys kind of right now. Yeah, I don't have that really figured out quite yet. So uh, no one's a, you don't have a great 
RB. I still don't have a great feel for the next. Who's your thing RB after four? Sherman. I don't have one yeah. right now. It's it's too inconclusive at, at, at the late. moment. Right. It felt it felt good there for a minute to be late late first round, maybe snagging some running backs, but feels like maybe right now. And then we'll again the draft capital will maybe help push and pull some of this around. Uh, but uh, you know, seems like I could leave Evans at four. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But we'll then see. five, you know, I don't know. I, you'd have to put him in the tier with everybody, I guess. Right. There's probably some receivers I'd rather have um, than some of those guys and throw Levis in there and maybe a tight end. Uh, or she Rice over uh, uh, right now, I'll probably all those tier of most running of backs? those running backs. You're going to take those running backs take over a, Rice? Most of them, probably. We'll, we'll see how that kind of plays out. But let's go into the tight ends because we're, talk- we're usually talking super flex tight end premium. Um, and I think those guys, you know, probably opened some buys, made themselves a little bit of cash. Sheesh. Um, some moolah, uh, but you know, great. Some really good scores and some guys that you got to go look back. So, you know, right off the rip, you were looking at Mayer, uh, maybe Musgraves and, and Washington. Um, Boy, everybody's mad at Mayer. You better not take him in the first round of a startup now or, or a rookie draft, right? Tight end premium. Can't take Mayer in the first yeah. round. Oh, I, I don't. Uh, people didn't love the uh, the four, uh, four seven. Typically, I don't even give a fuck about really the yeah the the combine for it's a not tight like end. He's out there just, burning people, and some Boy. people would be like, "Oh, well, all those all these great ones are outliers." Well, that, what does that fucking tell you? Like, you know, it just you know, <laughs> <laughs> what does it tell you? That, that fucking who gives a shit? Yeah, like, you know, most of the really good ones in the league right now, nobody really even saw coming. Um, you know, nobody was like, oh, Kittle's going to be the best tight end in the league or fucking fuck a fourth round pick or uh, Kelsey's going to be the best tight end he in the league the or, pick. you know, I mean, and, and I think he was hurt. People kind of forgot fell. about Gronk and he had a back injury and was and was hurt. He and, fell to the second. You know, Aaron Hernandez was, uh, fir- you know, but up in there. But, you know, and we. You want Fant to be up in there because he was good, or you wanted Hawkinson to be up in there, and then like low, 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 right? Too. Lo and behold, look at what happens when you throw Hawkinson the so ball. He's probably pretty good. Hayden um, Hurst was also a first round. Yeah, well, that was a dumb pick. Um, yeah, Tutu Atwell was also a second round pick. Dumb yeah. pick. Sometimes yeah. it's just draft capital doesn't matter because it's a dumb fucking right. pick. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, Zach Kuntz, I'm gonna go with that's how you pronounce that because the other pronunciation would, you know, Mike the FCC. Mike There's a called. guy at work, and his last name is. Fucks, mm. and everyone wants to call him Fuchs, but I heard him in a meeting with a lot of important people there, and he was like, "Fucks," and I was like, "Word." And so now, people want to just say F, and I'm just like, "Nah, I'm gonna say his fucking name." Yeah, because that's great. Own that shit. Let's go. But I doubt. I doubt it's. Uh, can I even say it? Can you say that word anymore? Cunts? Yeah. Oh sure. Why not? I don't care. Um, <laughs> And we're gonna go with Koontz, and I, I don't know if it was and I don't, on the list of. I don't know who he is because I don't. I don't. with a K. I don't know who he is, and so I don't know how to pronounce his name. Crushed and the combine. Perfect man. score. Uh, you know, perfect so, score. If he was a figure skater, he'd be moving on to the next round. Yeah. Or, or winning the championship. Well, I don't know. Russian judges. Yeah, um, but he absolutely crushed it from Old Dominion. Just obviously, if he's putting up a fucking. 10, 10.0. A 10.0. You don't really need to read too many. Look of the, at Vince Carter in the dunk contest right Too here. many of the uh, stats there, but uh, coming in. He's bad. He followed too closely. What, 6'7", 255? Yeah, in um, your bra. So big fella. Luke Musgraves then comes in and, and has, a, has a good combine as well, which, you know, he was kind of him and Washington and uh, Tucker Kraft were kind of the other guys who were in the mix, I think, for up at the top of the end of the tight end. So Musgraves kind of solidifying that, coming in pretty athletic as the second highest uh, RAS score there. Um, so he's pretty interesting. Uh, he's coming in at 6'5", 253, 4'6", great uh, vertical and, and broad for, for their respective. Elite um, speed and explosion. And Daryl Washington has Woo! a good combine, and then obviously that the one big catch. catch has been really, you know, one catch will really – Boost you up. Um, it was the last catch, too, they said. I didn't see it live. Tight end from Michigan had a good uh, draft. But really, all these guys up at the top who you were kind of counting on all had nice combines. Tucker Kraft had a good one. And then Sam Laporta, I think, elevated himself up. Uh, got, and you got to go check, you know, I got to go check out Laporta now because I, I hadn't really watched any of his. But he, he 
came back kind of glowing from this combine. Iowa people tight were, ends aren't ever any good. Right. People were pretty stoked about uh, Laporta, um, you know, turning in uh, a nice a nice score. But 6'3", 245, so a little on the smaller end, but a 4.59 uh, from him. So we got to go check him out um, and see see what's up with him. But overall, the tight end class are opening some eyes. You didn't get Kincaid in here, um, who, you know, is, is probably – tight end one or tight end two for a lot of people you know already um and then you know mayor is most likely going to get a first round uh draft capital um and and go out there and, and do his damn thing um so it'd be interesting to see with the tight ends i'm not gonna spend a ton of time oh, on still it. got a green fucking box oh yeah i mean it just it just wasn't as great as some of these other guys up at the top but i mean mayor's gonna be just fine how do you um, get a green box? Everything's yellow. And people were so mad at him on Twitter. There's no way he had a green box. But that's a, that's a green box right there in the RAS score, 8.08. .08. Yeah. So, I mean. Must just, be good. Just absolutely, uh, you know, kind of silly. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. Jelani Woods had a, had a nice uh, RAS score. Mike Kosecki had a nice RAS score. Oh, comps? Uh, yeah, Jordan Cameron, uh, Kevin Brock, who I don't even know who the fuck that is. Well, it's not Michael Mayer's comps. Who are you comps? No, this is uh, this is the number one Koontz. Um, those are his his comps for for the best tight end uh, ever. <laughs> so you know, obviously there was no Kittle, <laughs> Kelsey, uh, Tony Gonzalez, you know, on there. So um, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> uh, I don't think speed and yeah. And all this other stuff really comes in. Tight ends is a special, weird position that, you know, Evan Ingram finally kind of got that breakout. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're, ho we're hoping that you, what we, we, we want out of you is to skew a little bit more towards that receiving ability, which Evan Ingram kind of can give you. What's Hockensick wild kind of give you. Is it hardly any Goddard tight ends should be re recognized up as a there. rookie. Right. And Ingram did. Right, and then it did not work out. Right, until like Joku his fifth or sixth took a year in the here, and it seems like maybe it's coming on. Joku's finally twenty five, and now he's like yeah. someone I really want. Can I've almost, always wanted him, and he was too expensive. Can almost run a car now, so yeah, yeah. Can you at twenty five? I, I think twenty five. They probably should up that, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got anything else? On tight ends? Yeah. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't Let's, overreact out there, kids. And don't act like you know everything. Right. It, it's just one day. It's fun. It's fun to watch. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to speculate. People, some people, a lot of people really do care a lot about it, including NFL offices and shit. And you should, you know, it's a part, it's a piece, but, and it's going to, it's going to make value change, you know, and whether it matters to you or not, the court of public opinions value definitely sways and, you know. You oh. got to take note of that just accordingly. We're but. just trying to put the fun back in fantasy because a lot of these people really suck the fun right the fuck out of it. So let's get the <laughs> FFF out of here. Yeah. And, uh, Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, iTunes or Spotify, go hit that five star review. You don't even have to type anything. Just tap the five stars. Go to revelrybrewingco.com. Get your, yourself a T-shirt. Uh, Patreon, you going, you going on tomorrow? No, not this week. Too much not going this on. Week? Not All a lot right. going on the next. You've been two going weeks. live with the patrons, yeah. getting at least three extra episodes a month on Patreon, and we'll be up in that here shortly um, to to probably more like four. Um, yeah. But right now we're, we're for sure locked into three plus the Discord, um, and we'll have rank you know rookie rankings, and and we'll eventually have some dynasty rankings updated, and we we'll have access to all that kind of stuff. So yeah, five dollar high. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. Appreciate you. Uh, we'll be back. I think we got some Dynasty trade targets going to drop soon, something like that. Yeah, seems like Big Co might come back. We got an analytical guy joining us to talk more about the combine. Got a couple guests lined up. I don't know why up. we're having him on because fuck those guys. Bro. <laughs> it's important to get everybody's opinion and see where things lie and, and get your... get your. Uh, hey, I want to normalize spreadsheets. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of spreadsheets are getting updated today. I want someone do the work for me. Let me get that spreadsheet you yeah. just updated. What I don't understand is if these numbers are so cut and dry, why do we need all these fucking guys doing spreadsheets? Why do we need film guys at all? Why do, why do they, they even have to make a pick in the draft? You just take the guy who scores the best next. Right. But it just... They act like they can't skew the numbers to fit their narratives, too, which is always the wildest Man, And situation. the more I've been diving into this and the more I look at different people's spreadsheets, they're, they're taking different averages and shit. Yeah. 
You know? Like, Nobody's figured is it, out it a yet. per game thing or is it a total thing? You know? Like, well, if I like the guy and his points per game are better than his overall finish because he maybe he missed some games, then I'm going to use his ranking of points per game. Right. You know? Like, I'm skewing shit. Yeah. Because it's weird. You, you wouldn't think that the analytical guys would just, like, like a guy. Right. And then skew some numbers towards him. You'd think they'd like him because of the numbers. But... I don't know. I they, think they do like get like the numbers a guy. going, and then they try to skew them into a box. I, I I feel like that's probably you know some of what goes on, but it's it's a marriage of both things. It needs it's to be all the things. I need. Yeah. I want all I the information I can get. I want to know all about it, and I don't want to make my decision solely based on either one. So. Right. Anyway, it's really just a one or a zero. Is he good at football or not? I think that's maybe the best way to put it. it seems like it's. You know, a zero more complicated than that, but it's or it's one, not. and then it's not binary. Ugh. Yeah, there's only ten kinds of people in the world: those that read binary and those that don't. Mm. All right, appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>